three. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to our weekly devotional series. This is day three, and on behalf of Pastor John and Pastor Tim, welcome. I'm Pastor Jet, and we've been going through the last week of Jesus' life in the book of Mark, and today we find ourselves in chapter 11, beginning in verse 27. It says this, And they came again to Jerusalem, and he was as he was walking in the temple, Jesus, the chief priests and the scribes and elders came to him, and they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things, or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus answered, and said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then do you not believe him? But shall we say from man? They were afraid of the people, for they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Jesus had so many of these, what I call just mic drop moments where he just <laughs> confronts the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of the day. And, and he does this over and over and over again. And I, I can't imagine the frustration of these leaders that are going through this because you know they spent the whole night talking about this and their whole meeting uh, was driven around this one topic how can we trap this guy so he'll say something that we can get him in trouble with the romans with so we can put him to death and get rid of jesus and so they had come up with this elaborate plan and thought and thought about it and in just one moment jesus just totally throws them back on their heels and, and they become cowards in this moment. And, and I love this because Jesus doesn't feel like he has to defend his authority to them because he's confident. And, and I like this because just a few weeks later, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus reminds the disciples, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. I don't have to get it from anybody. It is mine. And my, he's confident in his authority. And and I think what that means for me as I think about this during Holy Week is regardless of the uncertainty of life and what's going on uh, in my life, I can be certain that Jesus is still on a throne and he still has authority over everything that goes on. And so I don't have to worry about what people say about me or what people do to me because my job is simply to follow Jesus's authority and to put myself under his authority. And when you do that, it just transforms the way you live. And so I think about this psalm. Uh, I want to read this to you. At the end of Psalm 56, um, it says this in verse uh, 11, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Now, John, you brought up the idea of, you know, the fear in that psalm or lack thereof, and we think about authority sometimes, and if we hear it out in the world, sometimes it can be like oppressive. You know, when you think of Jesus' authority, like what really captivates you when you describe Jesus' authority that he may be talking about? Wow. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, thinking about what, what does authority uh, really mean? And what, what is authority outside of, um, boy, I don't know, that's a really good question. Do you, you want know, to come in? I think about authority of, you know, from the very beginning in the garden, that was like something that, that became a problem for man. As God said, you know, here's the one thing I'm going to ask you not to do is to mess with this tree. And like, you know, we were like, ugh. And so I think authority, it, when it applies to Jesus, it's, it's basically like a surrender of ourselves. We're saying, Lord, I, I come underneath your lordship in my life. And I, I say, uh, man, you have all authority because you are the creator. You died for me. You love me. You care for me. Just like a parent, our heavenly father is looking out for us. And so um, 
it's not an authority where he comes like as a mean uh, dad figure, you know, somebody ready to just come down on us, but a, an authority uh, of love and of care for us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's a great description uh, of that. And life with Jesus is better than life without Jesus. And if we could follow God's laws and if we could follow his ways, um, our, our life would be so much better. And it's not to suppress us. It's to really make us to be everything that God created us to be. Amen. Man, I sure pre appreciate your wisdom on that, guys. Uh, it's just fun to really jump into God's word and just see where he moves us and, and really wrestle with some of these ideas and words. And so uh, I think people will be blessed as uh, they, they journey along with us during this week and this Holy Week. And uh, one thing I know I said Holy Week, what, what is Holy Week? Because I think people will hear that a lot and that they're new to Christianity. What is, what is that? Yeah, Holy Week, it's an interesting word. We've, certainly, it's not something you find in Scripture. It's something we made up. And what makes something holy? Well, holy is really to be set apart. And, and so out of the 52 weeks out of the year, we call this one holy because of what took place this week. As we look forward to what took place on Friday when Jesus gave up his life, we refer to that as Good Friday, and which is always a mystery, I think, for so many people. Why would you call it good when Jesus died? Um, it was good because what came out of that was our forgiveness and our redemption out of that. And, and so because the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the foundation of our faith, we call this week of what Jesus went through a holy week because this is transformational for our, our lives and for what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful Lord, that you sent your son Jesus and specifically on this day, sending your son Jesus, Lord, to deal with those, Lord, who, who seem to have authority, who seem to be uh, having it all, Lord, in leadership, yet they were oppressing the people and, and, and many times, Lord, just leading them away from you and the truth and your love and your authority. So God, as we think about what it means that Jesus does have authority, as, uh, as Pastor John and uh, Jet were mentioning, Lord, that it's something that we can be drawn into with comfort and know, Lord, that uh, you have control of this, even though when the world seems out of control, you have that. So God, we pray that for each of us today that we would just lay down, Lord, um, any pride that we have. Uh, let us humbly, Lord, just uh, bow before you and let you do what you need to do with us and for us so that we can, Lord, not only just receive your authority, Lord, but humbly go out and share that with others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I hope you can join us again tomorrow night uh, for we look at Wednesday um, of the week, in the middle of the week, to see what took place in Jesus' life on that Wednesday. So I hope you join us again. Thank you so much for being with us.